Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with some of the crew here. Dave. Nate. And uh, today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons Monsters, the Displacer Beast, and that can be found on page 81 in your monster manual. So uh, what do we think about Displacer Beasts? Displacer Beasts are all about hunting and the hunted. And they're just badass. I mean, they... like, the reason why they're in the Prime Material Plane was because they were basically hunted out of the Feywild by the Sealy Courts. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about how these, how they were bred and trained and breed it by the Unsealy Courts mm -hmm. in the Feywild to just make the, a badass monster even more badass <laughs> because they needed some help. You know, and then, you know, eventually they they break free and they're, they become wild and... Yeah. Then they get hunted, you know, not into extinction, but into out of the fair wild. So now we get to play with them on the prime material plane. And it's also because if you kill them, their eyes still glow. That's right. You know, I, I can recall, you know, even back to the like second edition, you know, you kill a displacer beast and it's like these things are chop full of uh, you know, magic <laughs> You know, you got the you got their eyes, you got their pelts, you got their tentacles and all of these things are, you know, useful for a variety of different, you know, magic items or magic. Well, maybe items. they're not really evil. Maybe they're just angry because they're so <laughs> useful. But when they're dead, they look cool. Their eyes glow. So it's you know, like you, killing a unicorn without all the nasty stigma about it. I mean, because it's, it's a displacer beast. <laughs> Who cares? You're supposed to kill those things. <laughs> so you know, down part is their monstrosity. So you're not wild shaping, wild shaping into it. But uh, good polymorph. You good polymorph. Um, they got some really cool abilities, but yet they're still, you know, fairly low in the in the challenge spectrum, so that you know you can put them out there, you know, pretty early. You yeah, well, you can put one out there pretty early. Yeah, you have to fight a pack of these things. That's a whole different story, right? Like, so a pack is like a dozen, a half a dozen to a dozen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's just use ten because it's a nice round number. Well, that's a hundred. That's eight hundred and fifty hit points to whittle through. That's a lot. With with disadvantage on every swing. And, uh, and tentacle, area reach tentacle attacks, reach tentacle attacks, and area effect things are pretty good at getting out of the way. They're automatically going to take half damage, and if they pass their save, they don't take any. Yes, and that's that's just sick. So, In this edition, anyway. Yeah, so I mean, you know, they're basically they're apex predators. They can work individually or in a pack, or they can you can pair them up with other monsters. There is a lot of cool ways to use these. Um, you know, they don't really talk about as far as environment. So, you know, I can I can see these in a forest, I can see them in a jungle. Mm -hmm. You know, you could I could see them in the desert or the mountain, really. I could I could see them almost anywhere you would find a cat. Yeah. You might you might reflavor it a little bit and change um, you know, the coloration to mm -hmm. blend into where they're from. Yeah. And because they're I mean because cats are in all those places, and yeah. they're deadlier than the cat. So. Yeah, in the Arctic, their fur would be white. You know, yeah. In the swamp, you know, maybe they're, you know, I, for some reason, swamp creatures seem to be, like, shaggy looking. I don't know why. Maybe mm -hmm. the I think because it's, like, always wet and muddy. Yeah, so maybe. So you get muddy and wet, and it's always, like, you, you look, look gross. Yeah. yeah. In, the sure. in the desert, they're going to be the same color as the sand. Yeah, yeah, um, more of a tawny, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I mean, that that's that's fairly standard. Um, you know, but, I mean, they they... The, you know they are a, a lawful evil creature. You know their eyes glow. That they they definitely have that menacing effect. So how do we use them in a in a cooler, unique way? Okay, so here's the thing. You know, one they have reach, as Nate pointed out. Now mm -hmm. it it's significant in this edition in the sense that the only way to draw an attack of opportunity is leaving combat with somebody, right? Well, if you if you can reach them and they can't reach you, they cannot take the attack of opportunity. You know you could they're, and they're they're fast enough that you could really use these monsters to, to go in, hit your party, and then run out. Go in, hit your party, run out. And they could do that for days, you know, especially if you have a large pack of them. And you can even try, you can even, you know, if you really want to build suspense, have them like wearing down the PCs, not letting them sleep, you know. Yeah, uh, jumping yeah. out of the forest, hitting them out of range, basically, and running back into the forest. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, so that, that would be a fun way to really taunt your players with them. Um, you know, they don't have really, like, st stealth capabilities other than having a decent dex. But, you know, they're mobile. And, you know, they're mobile and they're hard to hit. So I'm saying, like, you know, if you have some, some low, like, you know, dense forest with some low-hanging trees and the players have some, you know, crappy, you know, passive perceptions, you could actually have, you know, one or some of them, like, on branches up in the trees hiding. And if their tentacles are long enough... 
as they walk under the tentacles, you know, reach down and, you know, start the ambush, mm. you know, they're high up. So they're out of melee range, you know, and, you know, they can be jumping throughout the trees or, you know, pouncing thereafter, you know, as the, as the party begins to, to run, they could chase after them. Uh, especially if there's, as you said, you know, a pack of them and they just all, you know, latch on to one guy or, you know, attack one person. And we're familiar with how wolf, uh, pack tactics and mm -hmm. you know dogs how they how they go about the hunt well these are like twice as smart as those and they love to kill things they're really malicious and nasty they're like you know a cat playing with a mouse except like you're the mouse yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah so so you you know that that totally goes along with the idea of what i'm saying where they all yeah. attack one guy to bring it down and yeah, it actually sucks for that player who gets targeted with that, you know, but then it's up to the rest of the players to or I think they'd actually like to hit everyone. They would much rather have everybody run so that they can chase them down and, and harass them. Well, I, I think it really depends on it, on their threat assessment. You know, yeah, I guess if you're considered a mouse, a, a bunch of mice, then they'll they'll treat you as such and just mess with you. And but. they're probably smart enough to recognize spellcasters. I would yeah, say so. at, at a six intelligence. So like, you know, maybe you know, maybe the first round they spend shredding your spellcaster. You know, they do ambush. I, I mean, it sucks for the players, but you know, this is definitely a possibility. If there's, you know, if, if four of them just jump on the spellcaster and rip him apart, um, you know, they, I don't know how much damage are they doing. It they don't do a ton of damage. But it's per tentacle. So D6 plus four plus uh, D D6 so it's, piercing. So it's, so it's two D6 plus four. <clears throat> You know, per tentacle, they they get two tentacles. So if you're saying there's four of them, it's eight tentacle attacks. It's sixteen die six. It's a plus six to hit. So if the if they're wearing like mage armor or something like that, they're still pretty. Yeah, she, you know, if it's a surprise, if it's a surprise round, you know, they don't get a reaction. So there's no shield spell. Um, you know, so I mean that that's a sixteen die six. Um, you know, uh, plus six uh, plus what would that be? Forty. It's a it's 64 a 64 damage yeah you, and you know then you'd have them all fade into the forest yeah you know, so basically you would have definitely just got the party's attention and then you, you then from there the encounter can begin in earnest <laughs> you know uh, aside from the pack you could also do like the evil ranger type guy whether it's another monster or actually a ranger mm -hmm. that hunts in tandem with a displacer beast and like you know maybe you know like they they use traps and you know your your party's stepping in bear traps and trip lines and deadfalls and things like that and, and you know of course you know that you know, this ranger is the hunter type and like the best game of all is like you know man mm. type deal you know you could definitely do something like that so you you could uh i was uh uh what, one of the comments i was responding to on you, youtube i'm sorry i don't remember the, the name but uh he was talking about actually using skill challenges in the middle of combat so i mean this is this is a situation where that could totally you know come in come into play that all right if they're not going to sit there and just stand up fight with this you know ranger and displacer beast that they're trying to get away you know they could be using these these you know skill challenges skill roles to trying to avoid some of the more obvious traps and you know depending upon yeah and maybe they're more like ha hazards like right. deadfalls and logs and, and you know and, and things they have to jump over you know ravines and things like that mm -hmm. So to try and get away or get to open ground and be able to deal with these guys, um, <clears throat> you know, just definitely put a little chase in there. You know, it, it would it would take it from a I can't deal with these guys. What do we do it to turn it into a a threatening skill challenge where there's like arrows and and stuff coming at you from behind. I think it could definitely yeah add, you, you, add, add to the fear level of this. The the more you know the more skill botches you have, the more times the arrows are flying at you, or the more times you're gonna get swiped at by a tentacle. Right, uh, is definitely one way to go. You could also do like um, on the other end of it, you could do where maybe uh, a kingdom has a hunt, an annual hunt where they hunt blood displacer beast or something, mm. and there's a prize for the you know for the hunters that. That bring you know bring in the the, uh, pelt. the pelt you know uh, it could even be that you know or maybe a kingdom has this thing going on every year and it's an annual thing and what what they do is they actually bring into this place for me so maybe your party is charged with going out there and procuring the displacer beast for the hunt so now they have to bring it in and not only that they have to bring it in alive and relatively undamaged 
Man. ready for the hunt. You know, you can do something along that that lines. Um, so, so there, there's three different ways to use them right there. Mm -hmm. Again, like they make they're ideal for pets and guardians. Mm -hmm. Um, for your for evil creatures, they, they love them, especially if you have enough value to give the displacer beasts because they they're definitely that kind of well, you know, I'm done, you don't feed me well enough, or I'm not getting a good enough deal out of this, I'm out of here, kind right. of thing. Or, you know, what if you did something really fun, like, um, you know, some kind of dark druid. You know, change. You found the way to change into one, but he can't change back. So, but he still has the intellect of being a druid, mm. and and you know maybe some of his abilities carry over, or maybe you know a scion that you know likes to jump his mind around got stuck in one somehow, or you know or a wizard polymorphed mm -hmm. into one where you're using the monster physically, but mentally you know it, you know it could be something else. Uh, you could do something fun. I think I've done this. Is where you know you. What if you take that as the base monster and turn it into like a lycanthrope or something, really cool like that. So like mm. the, I think I did something where I had like humanoid versions no, of the, the displacer beast, the, the wear displacer beast. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> I think I did not. I didn't do it as a lycanthrope. I probably just made it into like a humanoid monster just because I felt like, it's you know, the other. a leopard po leopard people are so freaking cool. Well, what mm -hmm. would be even cooler than that? displacer people yeah yeah <laughs> i mean we kind of combined with how they look and their abilities and everything i mean imagine those hunters you know coming yeah. for you that would be crazy so i uh, i don't know maybe maybe we'll have to make that a thing in, in chimes of discordia that'd be uh that'd be awesome you know whether we go with the lycanthropic route or we just make a new monster i mean we we if we make a new monster we have a couple of places we could put that Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Which uh, you guys could look for one of those places at nerdarchy.com. <laughs> or uh, you can, uh, you know, check, check us out on Twitter. And uh, don't forget to uh, put in your comments below and click like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.